Hey guys, do Legit City here. Today in the game of Oxygen Included, we're going to be going over how to set up your first rocket platform on an asteroid that you guys don't have access to. With that means, today's video, we're going to be teaching you how to take the first steps in colonizing a new asteroid. Of course, this means that your new asteroid you guys are planning to set up shop, set up base, is not going to have the teleporter that your first asteroid that you guys should see will have. There is a teleporter on the initial starter asteroid, and we're not going to be talking about the asteroid that that's linked to. Instead, we're going to be talking about the other asteroids that are going to be a little bit further away that requires you to have a rocket go out and then do a manual rocket platform creation. And we're going to be going over exactly how to do that safely and doing it so that you don't have to worry about any issues, anything going bad, and it's more or less a fail safe option if you guys follow these steps carefully. Now to get it started, what we're going to be utilizing today is going to be a Radbolt engine for the example. And the only modules you actually need on this are going to be both of these right here. Both of these modules, the Rover and the Trailblazer module, are both three height, meaning that you need at least six height for the rocket, not including the Spacefarer plus nose cone combination. Now, because of that, you might not be able to put both of these on, let's say, a carbon dioxide rocket, but for a Radbolt engine, that's perfectly fine. And you will need both of these made out of steel. The major thing about this is that you need to have steel on both of these. We'll go into why later on, but remember that steel is key. Now, there's no other option. You have to use steel. Now, of course, uh, the engine is going to be up to you just as long as you guys have the space for this. The other modules, if it's not something I included, could also be optional, meaning that this battery and artifact module, it's up to you whether or not you guys want to have these on top. And the spacefarer module, you guys could also use the solo spacefarer if you guys don't have the height. And you're really not going to need everything that I have inside my rocket. Now, everything here, there is a lot of excessive stuff. We have a lot of room set up, a washroom, barracks, and a park. And we also have a telescope in here so that my dupes, you know, if they are outside of a asteroid waiting for the rocket platform, we could always, you know, scan out the space, explore a little bit more of the star map. Also, because of some of the times you might send a high morale requirement dupe, Someone like Brainless over here needs 20 morale, so we're going to need to provide them some extra morale with the rooms. Washroom, park, barracks, you guys could always swap out the park for a mess hall. They're about the same size, different requirements, of course. It's going to be up to you what you guys want to do for that. Now, the only thing that's necessary here that I recommend is, of course, the uh, wall toilet. You guys don't need to have the hand sanitizer, that's really just for the room bonus, also cleans their hands. And then the layer of plastic up top. You guys could substitute lead for this. Uh, that's also a great radiation shield. However, the uh, issue with space is that you get radiation sickness. And one of the easier ways to combat this is by putting a layer of plastic. As you can see, the 100 rads drops down to 33 rads. So I'm not worried too much anymore. Not only that, the oxygen also acts as a layer as well. And I always recommend having a layer up here. I've had dupes go 20 tile round trips and don't even get the minor radiation sickness by just having them use this and of course peeing out the radiation. So that's recommended. The water toilet's also recommended due to being able to pee out the radiation. And of course, a storage bin. Now, if you guys opt to build a suit dock in here, you guys might not need this. However, due to how the microwing works, I always like to have a suit in the storage bin at always. Uh, the easiest way to do this, sweep only, click your Atmos suit, priority nine, max priority, of course. And what you're gonna wanna do is go to your Atmos suit lockers. These over here are going to be your suit lockers. And what you're gonna be wanting to do is hover over the lockers. It'll give you a durability of the suit. You're going to be wanting to look for a high durability on the suit. Ideally, you want the highest possible. And it's looking like we have 89% as the highest percentage. Clicking on that, you can also scroll down on the dock to see if the suit's fully charged with oxygen. It's going to be 75 kilograms. And once you're ready, 
click undock suit and they're going to drop it. Now, the one thing about this is that if you have a deliver suit command and you click sweep, your duplicates are going to pick this up and sweep it to the locker. So make sure that when you do select a suit from the locker, none of the uh, putting a new delivery to the lockers is available. So you don't accidentally not deliver this to your space rocket, which in the moment when you need it, it might be bad to know that it's not there. So be warned without that. And of course, clicking on the suit gives you how much oxygen it has. 75 is gonna be the goal. Now you need this because of the Trailblazer model later you're going to be exiting. And of course you want a full tank of uh, oxygen with you when you're leaving the rocket. So that's the reasoning why you're gonna want that. Now you guys are also going to need to have your rocket engine have the range of being able to do a round trip. If we were to click on the change destination, we're gonna have something called a uh, range. That range is going to be how many tiles your rocket's gonna be able to navigate over. And what we're gonna want is to be able to go to our destination and then have enough tile trips remaining for the range to go back to our starting asteroid. If you guys don't have the rocket engine with this capability, I recommend tacking up until you can so that you could safely do it. I am not advising that you don't go with the refueling strat. However, I am not gonna be going over that in today's video. So if you guys do want to tackle that challenge, you guys are certainly free to do so. You don't need a rad bolt engine and the process is going to be simple. We are going to go to the star map once we're all said and done, fly right outside to the purple ring of any of the asteroids. And then once we're there, we're going to drop off a rover. You're able to drop off rovers and trailblazers the moment you're inside this purple ring by having your rocket on one of these tiles. Once you land the rover, you're going to be able to explore. And then if you're ready to build a platform, you launch the trailblazer module. We'll show you the process in a little bit. However, I will not be using this Rabble engine because of how this is a kind of a late game research requires a lot of tech you're not going to want to wait for this in a lot of the time so in the example today we're going to be using a carbon dioxide engine the carbon dioxide engine will not have the same height range for both of these modules so we're going to have to do a roundabout of a method in order for it to work however the process doesn't change and you guys could do the same thing with this rocket while I'm going to be doing it with the CO2 engine. All right, we're going to be here with our carbon dioxide engines because of the height restriction. We only have two extra tiles outside of the solo spacefarer and the rovers module. I need an extra tile of space for the trailblazer as well. We're going to have to do this one at a time. The rocket of choice is going to be this rocket, CO2 engine, rovers module, and a solo module inside make sure you want to have oxygen as always you want to be able to breathe your suit inside your storage bin wall toilet two tiles of radiation guarding and of course a fridge if you guys want to have some food which you guys duplicates could last about three cycles before they start starving and if you guys want i recommend bringing unperishable food that's going to be things like makaru that does not perish uh, there's also berry sludge that I have not found yet. Nutrient bars, swamp chard, hearts, those food types that you guys would find inside the vending machines or start off with, or depending on the biome, you'll find them growing on the ground. Those are great as they don't perish. If you guys don't have unperishable food though, you guys can look up something called berry sludge. Berry Sludge is arguably one of the best foods in the game due to the fact that it's good morale at plus three. That's the same as barbecue. And because it never spoils, it's ideal because you don't have to think about food in the space mission then. And because it's sleet wheat and bristle berries, if you run into either or of those, you guys want to grab those and try to keep the seeds as fresh as possible so that you could start planting them. And then once you get pips, you could start wild growing all of these plants. Of course, you get domesticated as well. And that's going to be up to you. But I highly recommend having berry sludge if you guys want to take food with you. Now, once you guys are ready, we're going to be launching and trying to go to uh, Slevelin. Yes, that is the asteroid that we need to check out. We haven't even uh, viewed the planetoid yet as we've only scouted it with a telescope. So we're going to see it for the first time today. And we're going to drop off a rover. All right, so we're here. 
Now, what you're going to want to do is deploy the rover. We're outside on the purple ring. Now that we're at the purple ring, we also get to see the surface of the planetoid. By clicking on that, we get to see what's on the top and nothing more. We can see here we have a lot of metals, pips, crash satellite, which is a lot of radiation, a little bit of water, mealwood, oxyfer, and that's not bad. Going to the star map, we can see more details about the planet now, the volcanoes, biome makeup, and of course, we're going to want to deploy. So click on your star map, click on your rocket, click deploy, and now we're going to look for a good location. Now the first thing you guys want to think about is height. The max height right here is going to be the biggest problem for going to new asteroids, as if your rocket's too tall, which is a problem for some of the other rockets like hydrogen, and petroleum due to the fact that you need a fuel tank and an oxidizer tank as well. This means that you need to build further down. As if a rocket platform is, let's say, over here, and it's too tall and it gets clipped by the red zone right here, you will not be able to land. Meaning that you're going to have to trim your rocket. There's nothing you could do about the rocket platform unless you do another mission again. But for our sake today, we're just going to land the rover. So once we deploy the rover, we will see it start landing from here. We're going to be heading back. And what we're going to be doing is going to swap out the module. We're going to swap the rover for a trailblazer. Now, of course, with the rover, though, this is going to be your scout. If you guys want to, you guys could try to look for resources, geysers, maybe artifacts, depending on what you guys want to do. And we're going to be doing that. So we're going to do some digging commands because the rover doesn't have a lot of resources. We're going to do by three by three a digging pattern. You can do it vertically to create a ladder. You can do it to the side like so to create a stairwell that you could naturally climb up and down. And of course, you guys could do this if you guys want to start setting up not a base, but just exploring the map. Just because this is very helpful when looking for artifacts, this is recommended, but not required. Now, of course, Rover could only do anything that's tier one. He cannot do anything that requires a skill. So digging through granite's a no-no, digging through refined metals are not possible, abyssal light, anything that has hardness value, building anything intricate, it's not gonna be allowed for the Rover. However, he does have the basic functions of a dupe. So it's not too bad. We're gonna be able to build the manual airlock. So by building this, I could make sure the gases don't leak out and the rover is going to be happy, able to do everything that he wants. It. After we uh, do this, we're going to be waiting to go back home with the rocket, swap out the module, and then we're going to fly back to this tile once again. All right, so we're here. We're back with the uh, Trailblazer module this time, and we're right back outside of uh, Slivelin. Now, of course, before we actually deploy the duplicate, you want to go into the interior. Make sure that your duplicate currently unequips their suit. You could swap out to the other suit. In our case, it's going to be Cthulhu. Now, of course, pop eardrums will be a thing when that happens because I had too much oxygen in here. But uh, hopefully it'll be fine. Now, once we do this, I'll wait for Cthulhu to finish using the bathroom. Come on, buddy. All right. So now that's done. We're going to be selecting the duplicate. We know that they have a fresh bar of oxygen now. Select Cthulhu, the pilot, and we only have one duplicate here. That's actually going to be fine. There is a autopilot feature on this. I do believe this is intended. I hope the devs don't patch this and leave me stranded one day. But we're going to select the Trailblazer module with the pilot and deploy. You're going to want to deploy arguably right next to your other rover. And once you do that, you're going to want to wait. Now, the rover here is going to start helping us out. We need to find raw minerals, in which case you dug out some igneous. And we are going to be building out our platform over here. The space vacuum underneath is going to be very nice. So that's going to be the ladder design we should go for. Now, the key part, why you want it steel. Now that we have both a trailblazer and a rover's lander on here, both of these are made out of steel. Both of these, when deconstructed, give you 800 kilograms. Well, 400 kilograms each meaning that you get eight uh, 800 kilograms total from deconstructing both of the rover modules and guess what you need exactly 800 for a rocket platform so now that we sent the rover and the trailblazer here we could actually deconstruct it and get the materials to build the rocket platform safely 
So now that we have that, we could simply just do something like this. Of course, we're going to want this on priority 9. Depending on your rocket engine, you might not want the ladders as close as that might impede the engines from landing. But you do want to build this out as best as you can. Oh no, it's sleepy time. They'll be fine. Rovers got their back. So we're just going to be building this out. This is actually why I recommend having enough fuel for a round trip, which is why the Radbold engine is actually really good here. They could do a round trip on every asteroid, unless the asteroid is at the edge of the map, in which case they're off by two tiles. So the fact that the Rabble is also the fastest rocket means that that's arguably the best rocket, although it doesn't have the maximum capabilities that the liquid hydrogen rocket has. Of course, now you guys know why we needed steel and enough fuel for the round trip. Now, once this is built, we could go back to 1x speed, go back to the star map, click on the uh, rocket and go change and land. Guess what? Computer does not fail us, and they land the rocket. Just like that, we have the rocket, and we're going to be able to select Cthulhu back as the pilot, climbs up the ladders, and goes back inside. Now, from this point, we could change this and go back home. And just like that, we have enough tile space in order to uh, land, drop off the rovers, and then go back, picking up our dupe in the process. We lose exactly one rover as part of this process. We have no way of taking him home, sadly, but we will have to launch. And then the rover could actually spend his uh, days here now, being able to scout out the rest of the asteroid, doing what rovers do best, and sadly, there's no ways to charge the rover yet. So once his lifespan ends, that's going to be the end of his story. But guys, that has been how to set up your first rocket platform on a new asteroid. Hopefully the tips help. This has been the way I've actually colonized or set up my first rocket platform on the Space Out DLC from during the early Axis time. It's, it was kind of a MacGyver method, but it ended up being the most consistent method, and I never had a uh, rocket platform journey fail yet. As we follow all those steps, of course, make sure you have everything you need in your rockets. Depending on the size of the rocket, if you need food, make sure you have enough suits, enough oxygen. Everything's going to be not too bad. The trip, as you could see, Cthulhu didn't even need food due to the fact that this was a short distance. However, on my other save, where the travel time is around six to seven tiles on the hexagon square, you might need to bring some food for those journeys. However, you're going to have space for fridges like that anyways. But guys, if you guys have any questions about this, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video on how to set up your first rocket platform. But that's going to be time for me, guys. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.